Hey friends, it's Alex from Vulture Culture, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can add LFOs or ADSR envelopes to your hardware synthesizer for free in Reaper. I'm gonna be using the Korg Pro Log 16 analog synthesizer, but this will work with basically any hardware synth manufactured since about 1984. The Prologue is a gorgeous sounding analog poly, but it's only got one LFO and no auxiliary envelope generator, which means that the modulation possibility on this guy is actually pretty limited. When you're creating complex textures, sometimes you need two or three extra LFOs more than what your hardware has built into it. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Don't wanna waste your time, so let's get started. Okay, before we get started real quick, I wanted to show you guys this low frequency expander um, that's designed to do the same thing for the prologue and you can see that it's obviously modeled on the OB6 which famously also only has one LFO and it's a really cool piece of gear um, and it looks pretty look at that beautiful thing um, but it's also like $700 and so what I want to show you is a free alternative to that if you already have Reaper and if not I think Reaper's like $60 right now and I think it's free to use if you're impacted by coronavirus whatsoever. All of the sounds that we're going to create today I'm going to use without using any of the modulation in the Korg Prologue. We're going to only control the synth with the LFOs and ADSRs in Reaper. I've got Rhea insert set up already on the prologue, and if you need to see how to do that, I showed it in a previous video. I'll make sure the link's in the description. We're also gonna open up Rhea control MIDI, which is in the Cocos folder. We're gonna enable control change here, and I'm gonna turn these off for now. What we could do is we could select the CC here from a big list. It's going off the screen just a little bit there. Um, what you can do is you can look up in the manual what the CC of any parameter that you want to modulate on the front panel here. But what's also easy to do, or the easier way to do it as far as I'm concerned, is actually just to record. We can record in some motion here. And you can see that it's, in, it's creating, as I move the knob, it created a MIDI item that has the info in there. Okay. And now when we open up this MIDI item, you can see that where is it if i look under the uh, additional cc's you can see here how there's an asterisk next to expression lsb unfortunately korg doesn't use the standard um cc's but it doesn't matter you can see what i moved so now we know that midi cc 43 is the cutoff to the filter now if i go to cc 43 so now that i've moved this fader if i go to parameter up here and this works with everything in reaper by the way and you go to parameter modulation midi link we get this little window that shows up and i and if you select lfo it brings up an lfo menu and you'll notice that now reaper is moving the cutoff of the filter for me and we can control the speed of course you can tempo sync this to a BPM if you wanted. Um, you can control the strength. Interestingly, we have different shapes too. So for instance, we could use random, which is a shape that we don't have natively supported in the prologue. And that's actually very useful for controlling, say, the pitch of something. So if I record a little bit more, I'm gonna go hit record real quick and I'm gonna move the pitch of VCO2. Just a little wiggle should do the trick. And now I can go look at what this uh, MIDI item has info wise and look for an asterisk. Oh, we've got an asterisk by 35. So we know that 35 is the uh, parameter for the VCO pitch of oscillator two. So what I'm gonna do is if I turn this up, we should be able to hear that I can control the pitch from here. So right in the middle, it sounds really good. So one thing I'm gonna do is um, go to the MIDI link and turn off the modulation for the cutoff for now. But I am going to, and it works off of just what the last thing you touched was. So I'm going to modulate the uh, tune of VCO2 uh, with Reaper. So you can see it's doing quite a lot, but if I bring the strength down, You can see that it's actually just nudging it down here at the bottom. We actually want to move the baseline to the center since that would be where it's in tune. And 
and I'm going to select random so that we get sort of these interesting variations. So it sounds a little bit more analog. The tuning in the prologue is actually very good. Seems like we use a little bit more here. So we get these sort of random fluctuations in the pitch. Now what we can do is go back, move this knob, and we're going to set up an LFO. But this time I want to select a sawtooth. So we're going to sync it to one quarter note. And we can reduce the, the strength a little bit if we want it to be a little less crazy and then move the bass line up a little. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool. Let's move over to the square uh, waveform because I wanna be able to create some modulation in the shape here. So I'm going to grab VCO by hitting record here. I'm gonna record um, a little bit of motion from the shape knob of VCO one. And again, we will open up the MIDI here and look and try and see if we can find, um, okay, so that's uh, 36 is the, um, where the asterisk is, and that's the automation for the VCO um, shape of VCO one. So again, I'm gonna just delete that. So we're gonna grab that and we're going to move this and this should change the, I'm gonna turn the, see if this changes the pulse width. So we get the pulse width of VCO1 here. So the classic um, sort of Juno uh, pad sound would be created by putting an LFO on this. So in this case, I'm gonna use the sine, which is also not supported on the prologue, slightly different sound than the triangle. Okay, that sounds quite good. Now I'm gonna mix in VCO2, which has the tuning, uh, random tuning adjustment here. To taste. So we just whack some effects on here, a little bit of reverb, and all of a sudden we've got, you know. All right, sounds like the, uh, this random LFO is a little strong. So we're gonna grab this guy, parameter link, and we'll pull this up. So this is our random one. We'll turn the strength down a little bit on this guy. So that's all analog signal chain other than the effects. And we're just controlling the knobs with LFOs generated by Reaper. Okay, so to add additional envelopes to the prologue is a little bit more complicated, but not much. We're just gonna go to the Reaper stash, which is stash.reaper.fm and search for Zonvelope or Zen Envelope or however you would say that. And we're gonna download this file, drop it into Reaper, and then use this as a way to generate envelopes. Okay, so all I did was download that file and then drop it into the resource path. Now you can find that it's just off camera here. It's the next thing right down here, but it says show Reaper resource path in Explorer Finder. I'm gonna hit that and you guys can see um, this is my, it'll bring it right up and you wanna drop it into effect. So I just dropped uh, the Zen envelope or however you say it directly in here. In the JSFX, I've got this MIDI triggered velocity sensitive audio CC flexible dadzer envelope and I can drop that in and now we have an envelope and um, we're going to pass through all the MIDI here then I'm going to open up um, RIA control MIDI again and we'll put that next in line here and we're going to enable control change in raw mode and we're going to grab that same CC for the filter I'll turn these others off because we don't need them okay and when we move this here, we're controlling the filter of the prologue. We're going to go to parameter, modulation MIDI link. This time, instead of selecting LFO though, we're gonna select link from MIDI or FX parameter. So we're going to select the Zen envelope and we're going to go assign this to any parameter modulation. So what that's done is you can see that when we hit something, 
We've now got... We've got an envelope that's being generated from Reaper and sent to the prologue. So again, there's no parameter modulation happening on the prologue currently. Of course, you can also do that, but now you've got control over whatever CCs you want. And you have attack decay, so if we wanted to make this plucky instead. So pretty amazing that you can add an envelope uh, to something like this. Now when it's applied to the filter, it's a paraphonic envelope like you would see in the Moog matriarch. And what that means is instead of the filter moving for each individual synth voice, it's moving for all of them at once. So it's a little bit more limited than the filter envelope that's built in. But you could use this on literally anything here, including effects sends, um, you could control the depth knob of the LFO, for instance, all sorts of stuff that's not possible on the prologue natively. I hope you found that interesting. It's just a little taste of how powerful Reaper really is when it comes to controlling hardware. If you have any questions about Reaper, the Korg prologue, or controlling hardware synths in general, please put them in the comment section below. If you found the video helpful, like and subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference. And thank you so much for watching.